Petro Dom. That has just been Envoy's playground. Chicago up 1-0. Let's get underway with map two as Mutineers try to get revenge. And Chicago try to put him to bed. With 30 seconds left, less in these rounds, you'll see a lot more early aggression from the offense. And it's right up mid-map they'll go. There's an opening into the B site, and they're able to get right on in. Well, almost right on in, right outside the door. <laughs> Now they'll work their way into sight. So Florida played this earlier today against London and dropped that one one to six. And you know Chicago was probably watching it. Chicago on the other end, the last two they have won. Led the way by Skump, of course, that big tent spree we can remember. But bomb planted, Envoy inside the site, able to find that first blood on a Pristini. Mox just trying. I mean, when you go that fast and into round one, they, they don't have that silence yet, right? So it's going to be so hard to retake this site without that. How many times have we seen that gunfight where you're trying to work your way from top? It's just not not easy. Usually somebody pre-aim there. Who's left? Havoc and Frosty. With no time to work with. Frosty last alive. No time to defuse, but he'll take as many Huntsman players down as he possibly can. Those are some quality shots onto our cities across mid-map, but that kill's not going to matter. And it's just such a fast execute. If that player inside the site for Snee gets taken down without finding one, like, there's so many positions they have to check, right? Mox has to come on in with an M4, has to open the door as well. That's free information for Chicago. Just not enough time on the clock. A good round one from them. Have you seen any really big differences in how the teams have been playing it, offensive or defensively, since the, the round timer change? Yeah, it feels like earlier commits to sites, right? Just not a lot of play around mid-map. Trying to out-rotate the defense. Anything for the defense, really, or really just all the pressure to the offense? I think it all just comes down to that, that offensive side. Sneaky from Scump. Leads to a first blood, but Havoc with a headshot trade. Nyon instantly. Arsene is just trying to get away, but not able to do so. Three versus three. Gunless is going all the way around, and I think Florida is ready for it. There's two players hunting him down. Yeah, he's going to take a little bit of damage. At least finds one in disguise. A nice little shot onto him. Just barely gets that final bullet in before he falls. Now you have a 2v2. Just 30 seconds to work with. Pristini, your bomb carrier. Gonna have to make a decision. Yeah, and his teammate is so far away from him. Well, he's just wondering, how do I get to A? Like, he knows he's safe there. He's just gotta get across. Not the funnest of runs, but due to the wrap back, yep. he gets a good timing. That's how he helps. He should be able to get this down. Nobody's starting the push over now, but over the top, what a nade from Envoy. They're just going for a check onto the site. It's able to connect, and now it's a 1v1. He probably thinks that was from, from their side, but that was all the way from the middle of the map, and Envoy's, he's gone. He's not going to get the bomb in. The nade saves the day. I can't believe that, because as you're looking at the mini-map, you're like, oh, they got a free plant, right. and bang, just over the top, the nade there from Envoy. Is. Here it is, look at I'm that. I'm so glad we get to see this. Whoop. Look at the Kobe onto the site. What a nade that is. And you saw Mox, like he's looking around like where where does that come in? He he's not expecting that from B from the middle staircase. That was nasty. <laughs> I thought they had it safe. Like they're good. Utility's probably exhausted at this point. Nope. No, sir. Two O Huntsman. Doesn't look like they're going to give up that angle as our city's patiently holding it. But this will be the big difference in the round count. Yes, you can play slow here, but not for long. Just not for long. You're going to have to expend utility and look for an opening, and here it goes. But you saw three different aids toss over the top of the trophy. He's going to eat most of it. Our city's still hoping somebody peeks him and he can send them to the next round. That's just not an easy shot as they still have a trophy and pressure. Let's but who's this pushing mid? Yeah, formal. He's going to use Deddy. You see that starting to drain bottom right. He's trying to find anything he can to help his teammates out. But Envoy 
Scump, they're gonna get taken down, but Formal's into a good position. He's dead, he ran out. He's dead, he ran out. I yeah, thought he was gonna be hurt. He got there, he got there, he got into that spot. Now his teammates, they have to go. They have to help him out. Formal finds two. Gunless with another one, and now we're down to a two versus two. He can't hit the shot. Mox beams him. And Mutineers close out a huge round. I thought Formal was gonna be in trouble because when we hopped him for a second, he had a sliver of his dead silence. Well, it's, it's almost like he's he, maybe you hear that in the position, but maybe I think it's your he, teammate. Yeah, that's you true. That's true. Teammate. He had a teammate above him, or uh, they had a teammate above him. Because I thought he was screwed. Because I thought he was gonna have to run across, but he must have just got there. Big round for the Mutineers. Keep this close. You have a player for Huntsman inside the B site this time around. And one watching outskirts as well. He uses Deddy, works his way up the middle alley. But his brother takes down his teammate Havoc. It's just, when is Pristina going to go? That's the question. How patient can he be? The time there, I mean, goes his way. Yep, and then see, see you later, brother. Formal. See you later, brothers. Pristini wins that one. Arsenis gets caught. Forty seconds to go, and still have to work this plant. I think that peaking mid. That's Envoy. That's going to peak up, and Envoy gets the kill. Turns into a three versus three. And now, with Dead Silence Pop, he's got a big flank opportunity. They've lost him, and he might get an angle up, make it to get there in time. They actually all push directly forward into B, so by the time he gets there, I don't think he's going to have the angle. But they should have a pinch attack as Skump peeks in through the window. Numbers now to Huntsman. The challenge and the pre-fire there is Skump. Might have closed out the round. Mox has to go for the plant with only 10 seconds remaining. But he hops off to take the gun, oh, but he's able to win it, and he's still able to get it down. Got time. Here he, comes, here he comes, here he comes. Here he comes. He can't get the beat. Oh, he's able to get away. He gets away, but not far enough as Envoy hunts it down <laughs> and gets the defuse, but Mox almost with a remarkable play. Yeah, it's like you have an MP5 in that situation. You could probably challenge it. He just tries to get out, gets hit by a bullet or two, but almost pulls it off. Almost like he is so close. That bolt right there, I think that's just the, I'm kind of screwed moment. He tries to get the nade off. Maybe get a lucky stick. I thought he lost it when he didn't plant the first time, but he had just enough time. What a one-on-one -on -one win that was for him, but couldn't close it out. Remember those two guys, former teammates all, all year last year. That's true. That's a good point. We had the brother battle. We have the former teammates there. Now the brightest spot of their careers up until this point was with that Gen G team. Havoc lying in wait, but unfortunately for him, two, it's a, yeah. a two-man hit. But the big thing is he gets one. Yeah, nice trade, man. You see what's going on. This was so fast that they have time to rotate out. There's only one player left at A for Gen G. For, well, not Gen G. Fool, though. Yeah. Talk about that. <laughs> and it's Mox. Nearly the hero of the previous round. He's going to have to be a hero here. Two players that can quickly rotate to help him. And they do that. You see how fast that rotation comes in. But Gunless takes Mox off the site. Now Skies has to rally in with Frosty. Skies just deep enough that the grenade doesn't connect. As Arceus continues to look for the angle. And Huntsman get that bomb plant through. Gunless wins another fight in sight. But it's Skies that's getting the trades. Two. That's it. Will fall everybody down for Huntsman in another round win for Mutineers. I mean, great shots by Skies because Arsides was all the way in his base with the sniper, right? I, I mean, I, I was about to, I was trying to see if they had a smoke to deal with Arsides, but he's able to take two down and a nice retake from Florida. I think you nailed it. That's all Skies <laughs> hitting those shots. Not only the long range shots, but then the trade as well onto Gunless. And they're keeping it within a round. Christini has dead silence to work with. Well, you know when you can't work with dead silence? 
Just a, yeah. That's when you're dead, Joe. Yeah, just a quick peek right from Formal, right? He just peeks the door, and Formal is still stuck in that corner. They don't know, but now they do. As he closes the door, they try to find him. But he gets a win. He finds his second. Finally, a trade is there for Florida. It's a huge opening from Formal, though, to put them in a 4v3. That is one thing. I mean, for London, it just felt like a hey, time and time again. But maybe with the time change, change teams are really trying to execute as much as possible towards this B site. Ox should be dead sooner than later. The closer he works up towards B, there are two tucked away all in the back cliff. I just don't think he's expecting multiple players there. He's not. Envoy's able to get the kill. Nice positioning from Huntsman. Keep the edge, but just for a second. Now a 2v2. 15 seconds to go, though. Havoc's got to work this plan. He's wrapped it back towards A, and it's open, unless it's, an Envoy nade comes over the top. Unless nade comes over. Skies, though, they're hunting him, right? So he, he's just no trying to stay this time. alive. He's trying to stay alive. He knows he's the main priority. He finds another one on yeah, a gunless. His M4 range is looking very clean. But Envoy, can he now clutch the 1v2? Right behind Skies, his snap is on point. 1v1 versus Havoc. He immediately saw what Havoc does. He, he just sprints the other way. He's played more 1v1 games uh, during his stream than Havoc. He's, <laughs> he's been more than Smoke a few. Oh. Smoke in, but it's Havoc that hits the shots. There's the 1v1 clutch. And Mutineers tie it up 1-1. You know, it's one or so of those, three, three. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where, like, I don't, I don't know if it was covering it, but, like, you, you, you want it to disperse a little bit, get, get him freaking out. You can sort of finesse the smoke. Or maybe it's a little bit short, you're saying? Yeah. Like the smoke might have been? Yeah, yeah I mean, he, he hits a shot, but sees him in the smoke, can't finish it. He panics or <laughs> tries to make it. I mean, play. there's still 20 seconds left, right? So he's oh. like, uh-oh. Right up the gut again from Chicago. Havoc. Havoc with two. Havoc a chance yeah, maybe third. for a third. Havoc dominate in the mid-map. Finally, they nade him out, but it's a little bit too late. It's the multi-kill through for Havoc in an early 4v2. Yeah, there's already pressure here as well inside of their house. One player chasing him, that's another Christini. Able to finish that, just gets the big toe, and there we go, a clean round from Florida. Starts with Havoc. Similar to what we saw with, with Formal last round, right, where there's so much B pressure. Defensive team just trying to find a pick in middle, and well, Havoc finds three. Is that three in a row now for Mutineers to take the lead? Havoc has been so huge, the 1v1 clutch. The three kills at mid. Now out to nine and six. Get me right back to mid. Yeah, right, right back to B. I imagine like both teams are probably, all right, maybe this time they'll go away. But look at the pressure from Chicago. They, they just go through A. They go through A. And they're calling this. RCs, he can. Trying to find one, that's a tough angle. But I like that adjustment from Chicago. Now it's on. And boy, to see what he can do in the site. So able to find the first blood, now just trying to stay up. Was it bomb carrier though? He's still alive, but numbers dwindling now for Mutineers. They had numbers too, because Gunless was pushed all the way up the flank, like on the A side. So you had, in a sense, a 5v4, at least closer to the site. They just didn't win any of the fights until that point. Frosty with a nice kill, tag from behind, trying to stay up as he bobs and weaves. Can he take another down with him? Bring around the Rosie we go as Arceus tries to finesse, and Frosty right back to he's the just, side. Yeah, he's just been sprinting back and forth. Oh, Daddy allows you to do that. <laughs> nice shots from Mox. Just time, time they're gonna have to try to plant this bomb. Oh, they brought it from a 3v5 to a 3 versus 3. Bombs down, bombs down, they know it too. I just don't think they have time to get there. Yeah, they, they take so long inside the middle of the map. Gunless, he has A on lock. So and boy, he's got B on lock, and, and that's it. Is that a good example of where the that 30 time, less yeah. seconds can hurt you? Yeah, that time difference, that's where it comes in. We talked about which map would it probably have the biggest impact on. It's absolutely our claw peak.
All square again at 4-4. We'll take a look at the map to see the split. Heavy pressure at A from Mutineers. They've got four players there. I think RC is just going to smoke it and back up. Everyone's going to find be this one guy here. What can he do? Bristini. Two huge ones. That's all he has to do. I mean, you're hoping for one. The fact that he gets gifted a second is great. You see how fast Florida's going towards the backside, but Envoy's up top and he's able to play his life, finessing around the site. Now Arsides takes down Havoc in those two kills from Prestini. I thought he was just going to try and get it down, but he's still so worried about the presence from Mutineers. Now getting the plant in for Huntsman. 3v2. A formal cross. All disguised now. He's been hitting his shots. He's going to have to hit a lot if he's going to get this clutch. 30 seconds to go. RC's got the box and RC's got the shots. Fifth round went in from Huntsman. Christine does everything he can. He's the only player inside the B site. Gets all you could ask for. Two kills right off the rip. And I don't know. I, I don't know if the play call is just because they both have Deddy. They try to go through the back door, but Envoy's just ready for it. The trade's not there. He's able to play his life. The trade, the trade's there. It's a lot different story. So it's a different story, yeah. Hansman looking to close it out. Take a 2-0 edge. Getting closer. Just setting up for the data. I think everybody has expected. Everybody has wanted a matchup against the home series Atlanta Phase Squad. Gunless so strong from this position at the mound. All is the utility exhausted now, though. How did Mutineers get him out of this spot? And for Formal's going on a wide flank, right? So he's just giving his team all the information. They can have one player watch mid. The rest of them focus on this site. RC's on bomb, just trying to stay alive. Gives that call out to Gunless. The duo locking it down here. He's able to find his second of the round. And you got to love that reposition. And, and they're just waiting for Formal, too. Like, Formal is ready to pounce on the flank. He's going to find Skies, and it is all up to Mox. Three for Gunless in the round. Mox able to win one one-on-one, -on -one, but he's last alive, and the only hopes for the Mutineers lie with him. Simply too...